Hi there, friends. Welcome and welcome to this week's crypto astrology. I hope you're doing okay. I know the market's been a little rocky and giving people some nervous fits right now. It's a little uh, nerve wracking to see the market uh, in extended low periods. Um, we'll tell you that we are not going to go into a extended crypto winter that any big dramas that are coming to the market and we have a lot of volatility coming. That is what I'm seeing is a lot of big, big upside and downside movement. So that's not going to lead to an extended winter, right? And even the deep, deep lows are not going to last for a very, very, very long time. The key is knowing which order, right? When we're going to go up and when we're going to go down. That's really the hard part. Nobody knows it. I mean, no one's perfect. I have a pretty good sense of it. I am doing an update today for members, but um, I know it's nerve wracking. So I just want you guys to know that this is not uh, death to the market. This is not going to be an extended crypto winter. We are headed into a lot of volatility. Volatility means both down and up. And we're going to get some really extreme highs as well. So it's very important that you know how to manage that because it's hard to deal with the nerve wracking nature of crypto, but this is how we earn our money. This is how we earn our stripes, right? And we, this is why also we need to take profits when things are at their peak, which of course my membership did. We were all taking profits in November and December. So let's get on with what's going on this week, uh, astrologically, which is quite a mixed bag. Un unsurprisingly, of course, um, as I have, we are still in Mercury retrograde and that's, uh, pretty close to ending. I don't think we have more than a week left of that. And then uh, we are also in the pre-shadow of the Mars retrograde. So Mars will not go retrograde actually until, wait, this is, this is crazy because Mars turns retrograde on Bitcoin's birthday, which is also Halloween, which is October 31st, which is the birthday of the white paper of Bitcoin. So Mars will turn retrograde on that day. Mars retrograde is never a happy time. It's always quite vicious. There's a lot of underhanded behavior and a lot of things just don't go the way you expect. Even if it's not other people doing things to betray you, stab you in the back or throw you under the bus, which it should be and usually is. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I hope that doesn't happen in your life. But even if that's not happening, things related to our health, our energy levels and our um, and also surgeries and things like that can also be highly, highly focused and in the, you know, the picture for that period of time. And this Mars retrograde, the whole cycle does not end until March of 2023. And we are going to see really extremely bizarre actions and behaviors from people out in public during this particular retrograde Mercury sort of like insanity types of behaviors and the retrograde is in Gemini, which is certainly a sign with a lot of duality, right? There are four signs that are duality signs and Gemini is kind of the leader of the pack, so to speak, with its strongest level of mental duality uh, because it's a mental sign and it's a sign of seeing both sides of the picture. So healthy Gemini energy is about living from principles and doing what's right, regardless of what side of the picture you see unhealthy Gemini uh, behavior is very political, can be very underhanded, can be a lot of backroom deals, things like that. It's all the reasons we don't like politicians is because of that sort of duality that, uh, that can exist in Gemini. So what does this mean? It means that our relationships can be very treacherous and we have to be careful who we trust and who we let in get close to us and what we tell people because those things can come back and be used against us if we're not careful. However, it's also going to mean people behaving in rather erratic, unpredictable ways and just not necessarily always being able to see or predict what uh, someone else might be doing. So be aware that this Mars Gemini retrograde cycle does go on until um, March. But of course, Mer Mars is not retrograde yet. We are only in the pre-shadow. So what we're getting now is the setup. It's the preview of coming attractions. It's what 
we can expect. It's a lot of the, it's laying the groundwork for the areas where there may be troubles in the future. So anything that's been going on pretty much all through September, that might be a problem, might be a diplomatic situation, maybe some juggling involved with dealing with people in a difficult way, um, is all getting set up for the bigger dramas that will happen starting really in November, right? On Bitcoin's birthday, which is October 31st, which essentially is November, not until the very end of October. So that Mars retrograde cycle is a very big deal for all of us. It is very much about warlike activity. I absolutely undoubtedly do see some sort of warlike activity bursting out. I have actually been speaking to my members with some dates about that. Um, so we have a lot more crisis and volatility on the world stage that is coming. So be prepared for that. That doesn't all just mean that every market is going to tank right now. There's just a massive amount of money in the hands of the manipulators right now. So they can use it to just jam the prices into the ground. And that's essentially what's been going on. Um, but that won't last forever. And we are, that's part of the reason we're going to, and then there's world events It's part of the reason we'll see really high peaks and really low drops in these coming months. So it's very important that we are prepared to handle whatever is coming. So let's take a deeper look at what's going on with this week's astrology. So we have this, uh, Mars making a T square, which is the, the difficult part first. So this is essentially the, you know, the retrograde of Mars is what's coming that I told you, but uh, this T-square is kind of a precursor. This isn't going to be repeated when Mars does go retrograde because Venus, the Sun, and Mercury, which are all part of this pattern, move fast and will be out of this pattern by the time Mars turns retrograde. So this is just a short-lived frustration, um, but it is a frustration. And... Um, it can mean a lot of uh, issues with sort of long-term plans, long-term uh, assets. Things could be looking not so healthy right now as they are. They're in trouble. Like most people's stock portfolios are not looking good. Most people's crypto portfolios are not looking good. Um, and most people's um, just even precious metals aren't doing well, right? Everything is low. So what do you do when everything is low? You have to batten down the hatches, you know, um, get lean, you know, don't spend extra money and sail through, you know, prepare for things to not be easy for a little while, because that's essentially where we're at. But this Mars pattern will break uh, by next week. So we're just in this tension right now. But um, the good news is that Mars does make us a trying to Saturn, which is a mixed blessing. It means that we can get a lot of work done and we can get rewards or we can accomplish things through hard work. It's not easy, not easy blessings, not necessarily going to give us any money, but it will get things done. So this is definitely the time. This is the saying, right? When fishermen cannot go out to fish because there's a storm, they mend their nets. So this is the time for mending your nets and uh, getting your ducks in a row and lining up the work for the next cycle that's coming because this isn't going to last forever, only a, you know, a period of time. So, but Mars is also squaring Venus and the sun and Mercury, um, all during this next week. So, um, week to 10 days. So Mars, you know, square Jupiter, uh, square Venus, first of all, is frustrating. You know, it's extremely frustrating. It's a lot like everything we start to get our fingers on slips through our fingers, right? It's a little, that like you're you're grasping at little things and it's not working. So my point here, especially since Mars is in in Gemini, do not look at the little stuff. Do not be grasping for those little tiny straws. Don't be trading on a day trader's, you know, chain to the computer filled with adrenaline, 17 cups of coffee later. Don't be doing that to yourself because that's a good way to give yourself a nervous breakdown, especially during this week. Uh, and then this Mars is also squaring the sun maybe in about a week. And that um, just really makes a lot of uh, people's energy levels have big crisis and people could be having nervous issues with that square. And then, of course, Mars squaring Mercury creates wars of words and uh, people 
like just not getting along with communication. So that's a challenge also. And then uh, we also have, I mean, uh, the day I did this chart, there's another T-square with the moon, but that's only for the one day, which I did this chart for the 22nd. So that's very brief. It only really actually lasts a few m minutes, but it is very critical because it is connected to the Saturn Uranus square. This is a really unpleasant and very um, difficult square that creates like this relentless onslaught of problems. Like one problem leads to another problem leads to another problem. It just doesn't ever seem to let up with this square. So with the moon on that day, on the 22nd, it can be very emotional, that feeling of like everything is, is stacked against us. And don't worry, there is some good news this week. I will get to it. But I just want you guys to be prepared for the 22nd that that's an emotional day, right? And that this, this tension, this Uranus-Saturn uh, tension is going to continue for at least another three weeks. But it does get easier after the three weeks. And here's a really key point I'd like to make about the a lot of the uh, the crisis energy that we're feeling with this um, Saturn Uranus square and other energies that are taking place right now. This is kind of promising disaster that doesn't happen. So it's it's like this pressure that builds and builds and builds. It's like the storm is coming. Is the lightning going to strike your house? Is it going to be ripped off its foundations from the, you know, hurricane. Oh my God. And then it doesn't happen. Then it just passes. So it's like a three week period of time of, of winds and, and gale force hurricane winds and just not knowing what's coming next. And this feeling of ongoing problems, one problem leads to another leads to another. And then the big disaster doesn't actually fully hit. So we have, this little period of time here where it's intense and there's a lot of conflict and a lot of people basically pushing back against the government. Again, this is that protest government, um, you know, control versus the public protest type of energy going back and forth. And it, this is the last one that we're going to get of this, of this cycle, right? And so it doesn't ever actually lead to that revolution. It doesn't ever actually lead to the public stomping through the streets and, you know, pulling, you know, government officials out and lynching them. I mean, it has in other parts of the world, but it's not really fully going to complete. So I just want you guys to know that this isn't leading to that whole big uh, epiphany and crisis moment that we've been waiting for. This is almost just a tease, right? So it doesn't actually go all that way. Um, but what, uh, what we do have going on that is the good news this week. So you guys do need some good news and I'm here to give it to you. So as challenging as that has been, we do have uh, help, okay? We have some help and it is pretty nice because Uranus, although it is squaring uh, Saturn, it is also um, making a trine to Pluto, which is part of a grand trine with Venus. Now that's a little short lived. However, um, it's still helpful. So this gives us a sense of nurturing, um, the ability to get what we need, having the resources we need, even if it may not be in cash reserves, maybe we can do things nice for ourselves, uh, enjoy nature, enjoy beauty, um, enjoy the things that we have. That's all in the realm of Venus in order to make changes. This is a time to make changes. These could be changes within ourselves, within our um, attitudes, within our approach to things in life. That's going to lead to greater success. <clears throat> Any kind of changes that we may, <clears throat> excuse me, changes we make, especially changes of values. This is in, tr in truth, really one of the uh, most powerfully helpful things that can ever come out of any kind of crisis. Like we've been through this rough couple of years with a pandemic, with people having a lot of very real health issues and real repercussions now over this next couple of years from what happened with the pandemic. And we can deepen our values during this. Anytime we have a lot of uh, challenge or loss that goes on in our lives, that will teach us, number one, how strong we are, how, how strong we are internally, and teach us to value the people in our lives a lot more. A lot of times, 
you know, it's easy in society to get very swept up in like success and external, external looking uh, markers of doing well when those things are really nice to have, but they're just the icing on the cake. If your cake is made out of sawdust, it's not going to taste so good, right? You need, and so this is putting us in focus on the ingredients in our cake, getting our nice fresh eggs, getting our, you know, healthy, for me, gluten-free uh, fl flour that we're going to use to make that cake, um, sweetening it with some healthy sweeteners, not this chemically processed, you know, type of heavily bleached sugar where all the nutrients have been pulled out of it. And then cooking it the right amount of time, not cooking it too long so that it's charred like a little crispy hockey puck and not too short a period of time so that it's gooey and messy, but the right amount of time. So this is putting our attention on, and, and by the way, this is actually quite a good metaphor for how our society has been, how the society we've grown up in, which is all like old unhealthy eggs and like crappy sugar, excuse my language, really horrible flour. I mean, my joke is that, you know, sugar and flour are the two white powders that have destroyed Western civilization. So this, this cake we've lived in has had both of them and some sort of processed reconstituted eggs and, you know, okay, so it cooked, they cooked it to the right level. So it looked good, right? They frosted it with a bunch more sugar. So it all looked good and all seemed good. And that have your cake and eat it too thing. But why would you want that cake when it's made out of literal poison? It's all filled with stuff that is going to send your blood sugar on a, a chase around the, the neighborhood basically, and, and guarantee you're going to put on some weight. So this is the metaphor for society. That's what we've been eating is that cake, the toxic cake. It's time for us to focus on the ingredients of the cake. Now we have the chance to recognize all those ingredients were wrong. We were doing this from scratch, absolutely wrong. It's time to start at the basis, get the right ingredients and build a nice healthy cake. I mean, there's lots of delicious cakes that aren't even that bad for you, right? If you make them with healthy ingredients, you can have your cheesecake and you can eat it. I don't know what it means to have your cake and eat it too, because honestly, if you eat it, you don't have it anymore. So I don't understand that thing. But the bottom line is you can have something delicious. You can enjoy it, but we got to start from scratch to build the solid ingredients. And scratch is more of a baseline than most people are willing to go to or want to go to or you know society has broken people down to this this not society but this well society too but this last couple of years is breaking us down to levels we may not have ever wanted to have to go to in order to rebuild however that's where the foundational change happens so this is the hope this week is that we can shift into a gear where we are focused on what is foundationally going to bring us what we need. And also the people around us, we can help them. They could be making those changes. They can be making those shifts. Maybe we're just completely changing how we eat or something. You know, maybe there are some big changes we need to make. And this is a week where all of that is highly focused and the challenges and the frustrations that people feel help them put them in that mindset to make those real changes, right? That is the good news. So it's not all horrible. I know it's been a pretty rough couple of weeks and this one is also going to feel a little bumpy, but we'll get through it. And just remember that the big, you know, implosion of life isn't happening yet. Okay. Things aren't really going to fall and shatter on the rocks this, this week. Um, the challenges may feel that way a little bit to some of us, depending on what's happening in your own chart with these, these aspects and these kind of really tough patterns, but you will get through it, right? You will get through it and you will come out the other side and we have other things coming that are way, way better than what it looks like this week. So that's it. I wish you all the best. And remember when all else fails, hodl. <laughs> When all else fails, hodl, because this too shall pass. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.